In this video, we're going to look at pressure volume work. Before we look at that specifically, let's talk about what work is in general. So in general, work is any sort of motion that's achieved against some sort of opposing force, right? Um, our usual mathematical equation that defines this is work is equal to force times the distance. Right, so you have some sort of, you know, force. Um, if, if that applied force is opposing uh, the the motion, then you know it, the work is going to be fighting against that. If it's aiding that motion, then the force, the amount of motion that's achieved, is aided by that force. So that's work done on your system, right? But this is just a general uh, definition of work. Now, pressure volume work is specifically any work that's associated with a volume change. This is typically applied to gas compressions and expansions, right? Um, so if we look at the figure on the left here, right, we're starting with some gas samples. So these green spheres are, um, green circles are gas particles. Uh, they're in a container where there's some movable piston and there's some external pressure being applied to the piston here, right? Now, if you were to come in and push down on that piston, so we have some sort of applied force, it would push that piston down, right, by some distance L. Um, and of course, this piston would have some circular area uh, that we'll refer to as A. Now, we can define the a change in work. We can build up a differential equation that will define the change in work in this scenario. So that equation would be dW, right, for our change in work, would be equal to force times the change in L, right? So you have your change in work, right? So this is change in work, right? This F is your applied force, and then this is the displacement of your piston. Right, so this DL is your displacement for your piston, right? So, um, so this is just basically from our general definition of work. Work is equal to our force. We have an applied force that's being applied to this piston uh, in our gas system. And the DL is the displacement, the distance, however far uh, that piston is displaced, right? So now the applied force is going to be related to the area and this external pressure, right? So we know we can define pressure. So let's define pressure, right? So that P external is going to be force per unit area, right? So you're external pressure is force per unit area. You can do some algebra here in order to solve for the force will just be P external times the area, right? So now that we have this force, we can plug it back into our equation for the change in work. So we can express the change in work Right, so all I'm doing is just plugging in F here. So we got P external times A, right? So uh, P external times A times DL, right? So that DL is still there. All I've done is plug in uh, our expression here for force in terms of the external pressure. Okay, so we can relate this uh, volume change in this system to this change in displacement. So think about it. Obviously, when you look at this figure, you see that there's a large volume that's available to the gas particles here, and that volume actually changes when you push down on the piston. So the volume change is going to be related to this area change, uh, well, the, the change in this length, but keep in mind that it's inversely proportional, right? So, uh, so let's write this out as an equation, right? So if we have we know that dV is going to be equal to the area of that piston times the change in L, right? So these two are actually inversely proportional, dV and dL. So I'm going to add a negative sign in front of the dV. 
because if we have a large change in um, if we have a large change in, in L, that's going to decrease the volume. Right. Um, whereas if you increase it, it's less so of a, a change in volume. So there's going to be this inverse relationship here. Right. So what we can do is use this. Right. We have this a DL here that's related to the volume. We can plug this back into our work equation and get an expression for pressure volume work in terms of pressure and volume. So the equation for pressure volume work is going to be negative P external DV. Right, so this is our equation for pressure volume work. Negative P external DV. So this gives you the change in work. So obviously if you wanted to solve for the work, right? So not DW, but just W, right? If you wanted to solve for W, you would have to integrate the expression on the right-hand side. So you would end up with the integral negative, you know, from some initial volume VI to some final volume VF over the external pressure DV, right? So you end up with these two forms. Right, so this is your differential form of pressure volume work, and this is your integral form of pressure volume work. Right, so uh, depending on the parameters of the expansion or con or um, or compression, right, uh, will determine how your work, how you'll solve for the work in each case. So we, I want to actually introduce four different types of uh, pressure volume work, and I'll do this on a separate slide. So the first type of work that I want to introduce is called the free expansion. Oops, not fee, free expansion. So a free expansion, um, and obviously all of these um, correspond to compressions as well, right? So I'm just... Uh, just using the word expansion uh, in this case, right? For a free expansion, um, this is just an expansion against no opposing force, right? So let's say you have no opposing force, you just have a gas that's freely expanding. Uh, that means that the work is going to be equal to zero, right? So your work is gonna be equal to zero because there's no, um, there's no opposing pressure, there's no external pressure. So even if there is a volume change, if P external is equal to zero, then the work is going to be equal to zero. So that's a free expansion. Now there's also a constant pressure expansion. So constant pressure expansion. And in a constant pressure expansion, this just means that P external is going to be constant and that's going to affect the way that we actually calculate the work being done, right? So we have, we know that work is going to be equal to negative integral of P external dV. Well, if the pressure is constant, then that means we can yank that guy out of the integral. If it's going to be a constant, then we just have negative P external VF, VI of DV, right? And if you're just integrating over DV, then that's just going to be VF minus VI. So that's just your change in volume. So for a constant pressure expansion, the work is just going to be negative P external delta V. Right. And if you um, if you've done this, if you did this in general chemistry, most of the problems that we probably gave you back then were of this type where some constant pressure you solve for the constant pressure and then you just plug it into this guy. We more or less just probably gave you this formula and hid all the integration from you. But, you know, very simple integral here, just getting a change in volume. OK, so um, the next expansion that I want to introduce is called a reversible expansion reversible expansion, 
right? So inherent in this uh, definition for reversible expansion is the fact that the process can be reversed. If you compress the gas, it can expand by the exact same amount, right? So by this reversible process, this means that there's actually a dependence of the, um, there's actually a dependence of the pressure on volume, right? You actually have some sort of state equation that defines your gas. So what that means is that we won't be able to pull out the external pressure in this way, right? So that means the work is going to be equal to negative VF, VI, pressure, DV. Now, I'm putting P here rather than P external. What I'm doing there is inherently assuming mechanical equilibrium. If we assume mechanical equilibrium for our system, then that means that the external pressure is going to be equal to the internal pressure or the pressure of your system. So inherent in uh, writing P here instead of P external, we're assuming mechanical equilibrium and that this pressure is going to be equal to our external pressure. Okay, and the last one that I want to introduce is a reversible, a different type of reversible expansion. It's going to be a reversible isothermal expansion. Right, so what does this word isothermal mean? And it's gonna be very important for us to uh, identify this uh, when we're solving our problems. Right? We wanna know what's, what type of um, expansion we actually have. Uh, in this case, it's an isothermal expansion. That just means that there's no change in temperature. The temperature is constant, right? So for this, for writing out the equations for this, I want to assume an ideal gas, right? So we're going to have the same starting point as a reversible expansion. But if we assume an ideal gas, right, then we have VI to VF. And we can substitute our ideal gas equation in there. So we have NRT over V, DV. Now, since temperature is constant, it can come out of the integral along with the number of moles and R, right? So unless being otherwise told, you assume the number of moles is constant unless it's telling you that some gas is being evacuated or what have you. Um, so the number of moles is constant, R is constant. In this case, for an isothermal expansion, T is constant. So we can pull that guy out, negative NRT, VI to VF, 1 over V dV. And now if we integrate um, 1 over V, so the integral of 1 over X is going to be ln X, right? So we just take the natural log of our volume. So we have negative nRT. And then the evaluation of this integral, we're going to have the natural log of the final volume minus the natural log of the initial volume. Now, usually this is written, we use the property of natural logs where if you have um, ln of this minus the ln of that, you can actually put them over each other in a single quotient within the natural logarithm. So um, this is usually written in that form, making use of that law of natural logs, right? VF over VI. And so that would be the work of a reversible isothermal expansion, right? Okay, so these are four different types of pressure volume work, a free expansion, you know, no external uh, force, external pressure, a constant pressure expansion where the pressure remains constant, a reversible expansion where the pressure can vary, and a reversible isothermal expansion where you have a varying pressure and specifically the temperature is held constant. So we kind of showed what that would look like within the ideal gas law.